Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. We are still in the topic of research design and in this session I will describe the overall process if you are doing quantitative research, particularly using questionnaire. So basically there are six major steps that you have to go through one by one before you make a conclusion and suggestion at the end of your research. What are the six steps? First is you have to identify the variable. Second, you have to develop the instrument. Third is basically you have to distribute your questionnaire. The fourth one is you have to collect the questionnaire. The fifth one is you have to analyze the data. And the last one before you make any conclusion is to do interpretation of your result. So those are the six steps that you have to follow. Let's see the next slide for the detailed explanation. Okay, now I will show you the overall process for quantitative research. There are six steps, basically. We see the first one. The first one is we should identify the variable. So in this stage, okay, normally the variable that we identified is basically based on the problem statement that we develop. And also we will refer to the research question that we develop and also based on the literature review. So the, this one is basically the first phase. So I, I will show you some example. Okay. For example, research question number one in our research, is there any relationship between motivation and performance? So based on these research questions, what are the variables that we can identify? Here, basically, the variable, the first one is motivation. The second one is the performance. So this is the first step, uh, identifying the variables. Next, the second step is that we have to check or we have to develop okay, the measurement okay, and finalize the measurement. Basically, all those variables, the motivation and the performance that I mentioned before, these two variables should be measured. Okay. So in this second stage, okay, there are several things that we have to uh, understand and we have to um, identify. The first one refer to the unit of analysis, second instruments, and then that instrument must be valid and reliable. And then also the last one, we have to uh, finalize the measurement skill. Okay, good. Let's go back to the first one, unit of analysis here. Okay. So unit of analysis can be referred to organization or individual or groups. Okay. So let's say in our example, we have said that the unit of analysis is individual. So we have to determine at this stage because uh, the question that we will develop will uh, depend too much on unit of analysis. The way we structure the sentence should be in line with the unit of analysis. If our unit of analysis organization, the, the, the sentences should be different compared to if our unit of analysis is uh, individual. Next is we have to develop the instrument, which is in this case, our instrument is questionnaire. Okay. And in the instrument, there will be some variable that we are going to measure. Okay. For, this, for example, in our case here, the variable is motivation and performance. Okay, so this motivation and performance, we have to uh, check on the content validity. Okay, so this content validity basically um, showing that how valid the uh, measure, the how valid the measurement that we develop okay? to measure the motivation and also to measure the performance. So how to get the content validity, basically based on literature review, expert opinion, and also the pilot study, these are the common uh, method that we use to get the content validity. Next, we have to check on the uh, construct validity. Uh, we can also run the factor analysis uh, to see how well certain item or question load well with the certain factors okay then uh, we have to check the reliability okay
Okay, some of the method that we can run is, for, for example, we can run the test and retest, meaning that uh, the same question we will uh, distribute to the uh, respondent um, two times, basically, at least. Okay, maybe, for example, the first question sent to the uh, respondent on Monday, and then we get the result. And then the next day on Tuesday, we send a game to the same respondent and then we get the result. So we will compare the result that we get in Monday, we compare to the result that we get in Tuesday. So that's what we call test retest to see how consistent uh, the uh, uh, score or response given by the respondent in day one and in day two. Okay. Uh, next, we also can see how consistent the score based on the inter-item uh, analysis. Normally, we are using the uh, alpha uh, value where the value should be 0 to 1. The closer the value to the 1, then uh, the higher the reliability. Okay, So, those are the things that we should uh, do at this stage. Next, uh, we have to be very sure what are the scale that we use in our um, uh, question, okay, whether it is nominal or whether it is ordinal interval or ratio. The reason why we have to um, we have to really uh, confirm at this stage for the category of scale nominal ordinal interval or ratio because towards the end we will run the analysis and the analysis will be depending too much. Uh, on the type of scale okay so for example in our case here the uh, variable is motivation and then that one is ratio scale because we are using Likert scale the second uh, variable is, which is performance also fall under ratio scale because we are using Likert scale 1 2 3 4 5 okay so these are the second step next <coughs> uh, at this stage, okay, we also should be clear on what kind of analysis that we will employ later on. Okay, so at this stage, we, we are planning basically. So basically, uh, in this stage, the technique of analysis should be in line with the research question that we developed before. Okay, and also should be in line with the measurement skill that we have. For example, okay, the, according to the research question, and according to the measurement skill that we have, the most appropriate uh, technique of analysis in our case here is regression analysis. Okay, so those are the things that you should be clear in the very beginning of the stage before you conduct the um, before you distribute the questionnaire. Okay, I hope you are clear on this stage. Then we go to the third stage. Then here is the stage where we start distributing the questionnaire. Okay. So before we really distribute the questionnaire, there are two issues that we have to settle. The first one is sampling design and size. The second is the medium of distribution. Okay. For sampling design, there are several options, simple random sampling, stratified, systematic, cluster random sampling. So you, you have we have to choose the best one that suit to our nature of research and also suit to the research question. For example, here, let's say we are choosing simple random sampling. Okay. Next, uh, we have to identify the sample size. Okay, there are several methods. For example, here you can use Cohen 1992 or Craig and Morgan 1970. For example, if you use uh, a rule, a Cohen rule, for example, let's say you choose n equal to 85, the number of sample. Okay, for uh, for significant level 0 0.05 and the effect size is uh, moderate. Okay. Okay, so uh, these are the two things for simple sampling design and size. Next, we have to choose the medium of distribution, okay, how to distribute the questionnaire. We have some options, for example, online or offline. They say now uh, for uh, cost, uh, costing reason, we may choose the online. We will develop Google form and then start sending to the potential respondent. 
So those are the issues that we have to be clear uh, in, 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 the, in the third stage. Next, the fourth stage, the fourth step, basically we have start collecting the questionnaire. Okay. So the issues is that okay, when we start stop uh, when when we start collecting the questionnaire, the issue is that when we are going to stop. Okay. So the 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 the, the, the answer is really simple. We stop when the quantity the, or, or the number of sample is sufficient. So what number is sufficient? Suppose, for example, in our case, if, if the number of samples is 85, then if we get 85, then we can stop. Uh, however, before we stop, it is advisable for us to see the, what we call, uh, to, to check whether there is a, a issue of non-biasness or issue of biasness rise here okay so normally we will distribute the questionnaire uh, first round second round or here i, I call it first wave uh, first wave basically the first round that we send the questionnaire we send to all and get the number of respondent this one is basically we can name them as early respondent for example maybe after two weeks let's say after two weeks uh we try to see how many um questionnaire have been responded okay then uh, after two weeks we send the reminder for the run response okay after that we send again the second run i call it the second wave which we send to non-respond group okay let's say here the group that uh, respond after we send reminder we call it red late respondent okay in the second second wave we call them late respondent so now we want to see okay is there any differences in terms of pattern of answers uh, between the early respondent and the late respondent if there are no differences then we will assume that uh, we can stop the uh, data collection because uh, if we wait further uh, the result will be the same so it is okay for us to stop since whether the respondent they are responded early or at the very late stage the pattern will be about the same so that's the reason why we, are, we, we, we stop the uh, data collection when there is no difference in terms of uh, pattern of answers when we compare early respondent and late respondent okay so this analysis we call it non-respond bias test and uh, the, 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 we can use the t-test to, to, to see the differences okay and then of, of course uh, we have to make sure that the number of sample here is meeting the requirement of statistical analysis for example here we have decided to use regression analysis in, in regression there are some rule in terms of the sample size okay let's see how for example, okay, uh, this is an example. If we are if we are going to conduct factor analysis, uh, we can apply rule of 150 sample according to Hutchinson and Sopranius. Or for example, if we are run uh, for regression according to Green 1991, the n should be more or equal to 50 plus 5 m. M here is basically I refer to uh, number of variables okay so for example here we have two variable meaning that 50 plus 8 times 2 so it means that the total number at least should be uh, 66 okay so uh, this is the fourth step okay hope you are clear now that we can go through the fifth step, okay, we, we, we will analyze the data. Okay. <clears throat> so in analyzing the data, we should choose the right technique. This technique basically depending too much on our research question and our type of data or the skill. For example, here we refer back the research question here. Research question is about uh, testing the relationship. Okay, and the data here basically uh, the motivation and performance basically is a variable which is uh, in terms of scale there are ratio okay 
So based on this, uh, the most appropriate technique of analysis is regression. Okay, <clears throat> and before that, before we run the regression, normally we can we want to understand the nature of our profile, the background, for example. So we can run the descriptive analysis here. Okay. Looking at the numerical descriptive measures, maybe we want to know the certain level for example, the mean score. Or we can also want to know, as I said before, the profile of our respondent. So we can have a graph, for example, the bar chart uh, to understand the basic profile of our respondents. <laughs> Next, uh, we have also in this case, we have to run the inferential statistics. Okay, it can be t-test, ANOVA, or regression, for example. But in our case, since the uh, research question is on testing the relationship, so the most appropriate one is regression analysis. Okay. So the last one is about uh, interpretation. So once we run the analysis, the statistical survey, SPSS, for example, they will produce result. So based on that result, we have to do the interpretation. Okay, for example, here, let's say after we got the result, then we can interpret. For example, is there if if, if this is the what we call research question, is there any significant difference or relationship? Then uh, the the interpretation for the based on the result, we can say that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that motivation is strongly influenced performance okay so those are the basic process we are doing uh, quantitative and in which is uh, in particular you are uh, develop the questionnaire distribute the questionnaire and analyze the data based on the data given by your set of questionnaire so those are the basic process flow that you need to follow and to understand before you going to make any conclusion and recommendation at the end of your study. Other issues that relate to questionnaires such as type of question, quality of question will be explained later. Please find time to see me again in the next video. With that, thank you very much.